Yeah, so another way of looking at this is to think of uh, this the gen this gen so the point is these overall things are not that important what the all the material is here so we define we say that w of f well it is f of t so w of f is just e raised to i times d of t1 minus t2 full form of f d f. So, we call this expression the w of f, but now if you were uh, astute and observant you notice that ultimately the path integral was supposed to give you um, th this factor pulls out of everything else which is exactly what had happened when you did that uh, stationary phase right when we did stationary phase you said if it is stationary at uh, the point where the f hits an extremum so e raised to i f 0 over lambda f of x 0 over lambda just came out and then the remaining term became gaussian integral this is actually like that what comes out is essentially what is the classical path okay and so we think of this as essentially the effective classical action okay so we define this to be equal to so i times z of f So, this z of f is uh, actually what we call the effective effective action, but uh, in terms of the current instead of in terms of the variables. For the time being just remember that this is how we write, uh, this is the concepts we introduce. We call w of f to be this, in field theory it will make more sense and however, this is effectively saying that I am also defining log of w as some new quantity, but its logic is that it is whatever is in the exponent as if it had it was the result after you had integrated out all the dynamics and that is the dominant thing that is what you would see in the classical limit. So, it is uh, some it is called effective action. Actually, you have seen this in StatMec. In uh, in statistical mechanics, you have say if you have the phase space thing, dQ dP e raised to minus beta h and times some operator. So, what you do there is you have some extra you put minus mu n let us say right 
then you get after you do the integral you get the potential there the thermodynamic potential appears in the exponent e to the minus beta say some free energy or something. So things like this are used in uh, other contexts as well. I have rubbed it out because I am not quite sure what it is but I am trying to give you the idea that this side has a, has a uh, so this actually came out of doing a DQ, the big DQ. But after all the dust settles, we just identify the leading term as the new effective action. In, so it contains actually the information of all the quantum mechanics that is going on, right? Because by varying it enough times, you can calculate all the correlation functions. That is the point at least for the harmonic oscillator case the d can is in fact this this is equal to d because look at it this is the answer in front of you so if you varied with respect to f1 two remarks one is that to this is the average. I should have used a bar or something, so not quantum mechanical. But this is in fact equal to <coughs> because what happens? Uh, you vary this with respect to F1, D1 to F2 comes down. So we do sequentially, so I D by D F T 2 of this exponent F D F will be equal to the F D F in the denominator but with one F removed. So it will become equal to this I times this minus I. So plus a half integral dt um, dt2 this is varying with respect to t2 so dt1 will remain f of t1 times dt1 minus t2 right and times the exp exponent itself. Right, half has to go away because it is T1 and T2 but they are both arbitrary integration variables so thanks. So half goes away here and we vary second time with respect to now T1 uh, we should have used different variables but it is okay. So I then gives then this f gets plucked off so we get d of t1 minus t2 and then we are supposed to evaluate it at f equal to 0 that is good so I forgot to say that here uh, this but with at f equal to 0 the averaging prescription says that you vary and then set the auxiliary variable to 0. So then you will get that, yeah some details need to be checked but I think this is correct. So this is one thing, the second thing is that uh, this dt is very nicely an analog of the Feynman propagator. So dt is equal to theta of t raised to minus i omega t and there is a 1 over 2 
i omega this expression you should memorize by heart although i have not done it the thing is that the you you know the proof of this right quantum 3 you have done this many times so you know this you have when t is greater than 0 you can close in the upper half plane when t is less than 0 you can close in the so if theta of t then you you this minus sign is, is inherited from what wherever the t yeah that minus sign will be inherited from this minus sign when t is positive you close in the upper half plane when t is negative you close in the lower half plane so you get this so this is very nicely what the stuckelberg feynman propagator looks like what is the word for it pre Sage is so Feynman tried to apply the path integral to electrodynamics but the boundary condition was still a problem and uh, if you are any nice guy you will say well you would put same boundary conditions as on the electrodynamic greens function so you must have done jackson chapter 13 so where he computes the greens function for classical electromagnetic field it's just quadratic it's just box uh, equal to 0 so that box becomes 1 over p square but if you just want classical electrodynamics then you want influences to propagate only forward in time. So the prescription you put is not i epsilon but simply put both the poles above the axis so that you get contribution from both the poles everything goes forward in time nothing goes backward in time that is what Feynman tried and he was not getting the answer. So uh, then he looked up this paper by so Feynman's where he does the calculation correctly he cites this paper by Stuckelberg which was published in uh, Helvetica Physica Acta I forget the spelling some okay, Physica Acta this was Helvetia as you know is Switzerland so uh, Stuckelberg was a slightly crazy genius who who had mental problems so half of the year he would be in the asylum and then other half he will come out and write quantum field theory papers my advisor ecg sudarshan was proud to note that he shared the initials with him which were also ecg so it is ecg stuckelberg uh, good so now we go to field theory so uh, one last comment is that this particular so it is sub comment because i said only or we can take it as third remark is that this particular fact that the poles are above and below right like this on the uh, omega axis on the hmm, complex E plane yeah so this is my notation for the complex plane of the variable this means that this path of integration for E could actually as well have been rotated to this path and instead of integrating like this you could as well integrate this 
and according to complex analysis nothing would change because so long as there are no poles here this contours which are at infinity should not give anything and so long as the signs are correct. So even a tiny even if the value of t is tiny so long as there is a damping exponent you can always close it you can close it and so this this contour is equivalent to that contour and that is equivalent to just Euclideanizing the time instead of t you are using a new variable tau which is equal to i times t is rotated by 90 degrees and just to yeah it's tau times i t. So comment number 3 is that uh, the placing of poles rotating uh, t to rotating 2 let me write like this tau equal to i times t axis this all is a trick used quite a lot in quantum field theory and this is called wick rotation after G C wick so you can have some solace of a genuinely convergent uh, Gaussian instead of having to have that fake Gaussian with an I stuck in it and so uh, last time somebody was asking me this question uh, what is all this trickery you know you go to imaginary axis you do this and everything is otherwise mathematically ill defined. Well the point is that um, we really want to express the functional dependence on these f's this is all that matters because this functional dependence will always correctly reproduce what these averages are and again whatever this expression averaging expression is what we are interested in is the dependence on t1 and t2 we, we want to eventually calculate a correlator or an endpoint function in which we are interested in the parametric dependence on t1 t2 tn and everything else is really a scaffolding so in it if there are these impressionistic uh, flaws from the point of view of mathematics the point is we are not actually trying to compute the value of it we are trying to use this as a generating function for a formula this is the formula this formula will correctly generate t1 parametric dependence of this average value on t1 and t2 by doing this mumbo jumbo here whatever abracadabra do you do in the end the answer should come out right and that is so so long as that part is uh, right that is all you care and so these are ways of remembering how to generate it out of the full thing uh, so if you think of it that way then you stop worrying about the uh, mathematical precision of the formula or the of the process the procedure looks quite shaky but this is why you do not worry because in the end it, it is not that you are computing a value out of it but you are computing a function out of it a dependence of a function on its arguments. So we can begin with how this appears in quantum field theory. Now the curious point is that the non-relativistic harmonic oscillator serves as the uh, motif for the free particle in relativistic field theory. 
So, here we will have action which is equal to integral d 4 x and then d mu phi d mu phi this is what we will this is the theory we will be dealing with m squared phi squared and then plus a j phi. So, we put halves in front of these real scalar field So, this V of phi is not the actual potential energy of the system is this whole thing uh, sorry. So, the kinetic energy is just half phi dot squared ok. So, the minus gradient phi square minus m square phi square and minus V phi together make up minus u. T minus u just to change because unfortunately he has used v and I do not want to change that. So, if you think of Lagrangian as T minus u then here the u expression is integral d 4 x times grad phi squared plus m squared with half factors and plus v of So, the so called potential energy part is this ok. Now, if we if we take this and then do the usual thing then the vacuum to vacuum amplitude can be written as And now we call this j the forcing function j to be equal to integral uh, some normalization times integral d phi I will just write in more detail what d phi has to be e raise to i integral d 4 x times a half d mu phi d mu phi. minus a half m square phi squared minus v of phi and then uh, plus a j times phi. So, the i multiplies everything this is this and then plus j of x phi of x. So, this is how we define it <coughs> and this is already in configuration space because of the reason that this is anyway quadratic in the velocity. So, does not matter m square phi square. Now, most of the steps go through as before and you can consider a Euclidean version by um, doing x 0 equal to x 0 bar equal to i we had said tau equal to i t. So, you can always introduce a Euclidean one if you do not like this one. We now say that this expression we refer to as w of j. some warning um, if you read Isaacson and Joubert then the w and the z are exchanged Isaacson Joubert calls this the z and the log of it w and I think Greiner's book also does that somehow uh, Ramon used I think the wrong notation but once I am reading that book I cannot change the notation. So, and anyway it is a matter of symbols. So, this w of j can be 
shown to be equal to and this we can do next time or you can see most of it. exactly like we had for the ff so minus i over 2 where the p these p are four vectors And our definition notation for uh, this is x times f of x and uh, normalization two pi squared, how like the square root pi. square root 2 pi we had there this is the convention for the Fourier transform. So then you get this answer you will not be too surprised because exactly like we got for the q dot square if you start with phi dot square and have dt then it will become uh, omega times minus uh, omega times q phi tilde of uh, omega phi tilde of minus omega it will become product like that. So eventually you will just and then you will complete the squares etc. So you will get this. So you can try to do it for your own uh, benefit. So from here on starts the story of Green's functions and we can as well stop here by just noting that we shall say uh, that this W Well, this is really the average, okay. In other words, so this is a functional. If it is a functional and admits an analytic representation, then you get a uh, oh, this is not this is integrals over the right. 
right. So, these are integrals over x1, x2, xn i to the n integral I should I do So that is what it is, where this is j of x1, j of x2, etc. So you can always write some kind of a power series for w as a functional of j, and like multivariate calculus, this is what you would do as the expansion. The coefficients is what we call Green's functions. or simply correlation function. So, we will see next time that this correlation function is a bit of an overkill and can also have redundant pieces in it. But if you take log of this w like that z that was defined, then you get uh, really the connected pieces. Right now this would not make sense, but let me just stop at that. Okay. So, we will stop with this. <coughs>